Hey guys, welcome back to Vic Ferrari's Garage. So I know that in the camera there's a bright spot right here, so I'm going to try to deal with that the best I can. So today we're learning about a relay and some cool stuff you can do with it. Now I'm not teaching you how a relay works. You can look that up on how does a relay work. Um, basically it takes a amperage small amount from a small switch that can't handle large amount and it runs a big uh, amperage item like a fan without burning up the switch. So I'll let you look that up on your own. But here's the important stuff. This is a 12 volt 40 amp relay. It means it can run something up to 40 amps. You can hook a switch on here that is like a half an amp switch and it can run the relay because the relay is just a solenoid that requires a 10th of an amp, okay? So low amp switch can run a high amp item through a relay. On here is a schematic on this side. That's what you're seeing here. On the back, you see your pin layout. You got your bottom, sides, tops. These have numbers on them. They correspond with your map. So what I got going here is I've got an idiot light that comes on when my engine has no oil pressure because the engine is off or I've lost oil pressure, the light will come on. That's just like on your dash, when you turn the key to on, you get the oil light, you start the engine, it gets oil pressure, the light goes out. I want to use my sending unit to run one of my radiator fans so that I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry that I forgot to turn it on. I don't have to worry that I forgot to turn it off and it kills my battery when I'm gone. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my fans positive and my idiot light positive. I'm gonna hook those to the key, to the on terminal, okay? Not the start, not the accessory, the on terminal. So the other side of the key would of course be the positive from the battery. The negative from the battery always runs to the engine block, which the oil solenoid screws into, and that gets its ground. So it only has one wire coming out of it because the other side is actually the engine block itself, which is grounded. So they use the threads on the solenoid as one of their wires. So when the engine's off and there's zero oil pressure or there's a problem and there's zero oil pressure, it closes this gate to turn on that light's negative side. Now remember, when the key's on, the light's getting positive. The sending unit is at zero oil pressure. It is sending a negative to the light. But as soon as you start the engine, this light goes off because the oil pressure has now gone up above, say, 10. And it has now opened this gate. So there's no electricity flowing through to be able to get to the light's negative side, okay? If you take this pin and you run it to a solenoid instead of the light, you take it away, you run it to a relay, sorry, not a solenoid, a relay. Hang on, I was teaching something else a minute ago on a different video that I'm making, so let me close that back up. So you run this pin, instead of there, you take it off, and you now run it to 85 terminal on your relay. That controls this little low amperage solenoid which pulls this gate back and forth between 87A and 87. Okay, so that would be up here, 30, is one side of the gate, and it's either gonna close with 87A right there, or it's gonna be pulled down when this powers up 
it will be pulled down to 87 here. So it's either gonna flow to 87A or it's gonna flow to 87. Okay, so when you have zero oil pressure, it will close this gate. You now have negative voltage going through to 85. Okay, 85 powers the solenoid because one side's positive and one side's now negative. That pulls this gate back and forth. So it will pull the gate to 87. So we're gonna go with 30 to 87, all right? That is when the key is on, zero oil pressure, solenoid closed, and this will now come out and go to your negative of the light. So do you see how the, the electricity flows, goes through because zero oil pressure comes down, activates the solenoid, the solenoid closes the gate to 87, and power can now flow from 30 to 87. 30 gets its power from the negative side of the battery off of a frame, engine block, wherever you got it screwed to. When the engine starts, you get some oil pressure, 10 pounds, whatever poundage, it will open this gate. Now you have lost your negative power to 85. The solenoid now shuts off, springs back to its relaxed mode, which is touching 87A. You now lose the power to 87, which is your light. So your light goes out. The gate swings to 87A, which your power now goes to 87A and you now get a negative power to your negative side of the fan and the positive side of the fan is connected to, again, your switch at your key. So when your switch is on, the fan's got positive, the engine gets oil pressure, it turns off the light and turns on the fan. So when the engine starts, my light will go out and my fan will come on. I no longer have to worry about turning the fan on or off. Then when I turn off the key, I now lose positive to the fan. So the fan will shut off, even though the solenoid stays engaged because it's in relaxed mode. The fan no longer has positive, so it's off. The light is off because it no longer has positive. Okay, but when I turn the key on, these both get positive and the relay starts getting activated by the oil pressure. So it decides which one gets power. I have zero oil pressure, I'm closed. I'm gonna give power to 87. I'm now open. I'm going to take away power and give it to 87A. So it's going to switch back and forth. And then if I have my key off, nothing gets power. So I know that's kind of complicated. I know I kind of bounced through it quickly. But if you watch the video two or three times, you're going to understand that you can use relays for a lot of cool things using just like oil pressure sending units or something else. Uh, I mean, simply, you could just think of other things. Um, you could, geez, I don't know. You could, uh, or you could use another solenoid in line and you could take uh, 87 and you could link it to another solenoid's 85 and that solenoid could drive, this one could drive the fan and that one could drive uh, your KC light bar so that when your oil pressure hits zero, your KC light bar turns off. So you're cruising through the, the, the sand dunes and all of a sudden you start to get zero oil pressure and your KC lights shut off. You're going to know, uh-oh, my lights just went off. 
I can't see shit. I'm going to hit my brakes and stop because I have zero oil pressure. I mean, I don't know. I just thought that up in my head really quick, but you can use a relay to drive another relay and that relay could drive another relay and you could just do this all day long and make 20 different items run off of that one thing. And you could also make those items run whether this is on or whether it's off. So basically what you don't realize is I just explained exactly how a laptop works, okay? A laptop is just a million relays driving different things depending on what this is telling it. So this one item, whether it's on or off, could drive 20 different items to be on or off. Um, so there you go, I just explained the whole theory of computers too. So relays are really cool and if you learn to understand what they can do, you can do some really awesome stuff with them. I hope that helps. Have a great day. Thanks for coming to Vic Ferrari School.